Is my presence here upsetting you, Bob? Hell no! You sure? You kidding? Welcome. Nice to see you. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe if I let you hold the gun, you'd feel more comfortable. I don't know. Maybe. Well, well why don't you try? Come yeah. On. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. You're welcome. You don't have to test it, Bob. The gun is empty. Really? This one's loaded. You want to be very careful with this one, Bob. Okay. You feel better? Oh, much. Hmm? Thank you. Go over to the window. You see that man in a suit with a submachine gun up in your tree, Bob? You ever see a man like that in your neighborhood before? No, I don't think so. What about him? Well, he shouldn't be in that tree between us and the light. He should be in one of those trees down the street. You want me to go out and tell him to move? You got a good sense of humor, Bob. I like that in a man. What do you like in a woman? Big tits. This is the emergency podcast system. This is not a test. Movies are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may already be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Do not panic. Specialists have been dispatched. They will help you identify these pretenders and defend you against this invasion of the remake. Please stand by for further instructions. Welcome to the Invasion of the Remake podcast, episode 401. We're going to be remaking Real Men from 1987 with a real man, Trish Coughlin. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this is the funny thing because of how this deals with misogyny and stuff. It's quite funny because on paper, I am technically a dude. <laughs> if you didn't know anything else about me but the stuff I like, the stuff I do, and the stuff I'm into, I'm just, kind of a dude. Just lacking the equipment, but Sam's got the equipment. Sam Stepanenko. Hello, and I'm not a real man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you are. You shave more than I do. Well, no, yeah. I don't have a beard. Um, <laughs> you have all the trappings of being a man. Yeah, but I'm not a I'm dude. I'm sure Val would tell us if something was off. <laughs> I'm sure she would. Yeah, Just not a dude real man. This is a movie about a dude and a guy who wants to be a dude and then becomes a dude. And then the real man, the dude, becomes beta. <laughs> no, he becomes a real man. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind That's of- That's sort the, of where I went with some of this. Yeah, this actually, this movie's surprisingly forward thinking in some regards and backwards in others. Yes. But Thank you. it's 87. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's one scene in particular I'm thinking of. Yeah, I wouldn't fly today. Well, you know, unless we handle it slightly differently. The uh-huh. the scene that I feel like is probably the most problematic is Nick, Jim Belushi's character's parents. Yes. And one way I think it works because this is 1987 and they're uh-huh. talking about his transitioning, father having yeah. transitioning. Uh-huh. That's great. This is before assigning things like he she they so still calls him dad still says he still uses those pronouns you know that hasn't aged as well but that's something that's very recent as but well but he's excited about seeing his yeah. dad yeah so i i found like okay that part worked for me that part was pretty good mm-hmm. But then hitting on John Ritter's character started moving into homophobia. It fed, yeah, it fed into transphobia, yeah. where it's yeah. like, oh my God, they're going to trick men yeah. and they're going to attack them. That's what it felt like. And it's like, no, we can change that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I meant by is it, yeah. it, it's forward thinking, but it needs to be updated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the scene that I'm like, well, plan. you know, part of it works and part of it doesn't. It's like one step forward, two steps back. Yeah, it's a wild movie. With John Ritter, some of the way he handles stuff is honestly a very adult way to handle things. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's part of what the movie does is it it takes the good parts of both of these men and then they switch places Like because John Ritter's character is a sensitive doting Mm -hmm. father who doesn't communicate very well to his family and isn't very 
doesn't stand up for himself very well. Mm -hmm. And then you have Nick, who is very much the quote unquote alpha male. He's all tough and sleeps around and then he discovers his own MacGyver's sensitivity. Things. Yeah. 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 And I think that what it does is it's about balance, right? Is, yeah. is it's okay to be a man, but you also need to tap into that other side of yourself and be balanced. Yeah. On the other side of the fence, it's also a weird ass spy movie. Yes. Very weird ass. <laughs> With aliens. And I'm going to say it right out the gate. I'm keeping the aliens and I have a reason. Yeah, this one's very strange because it opens with somebody who is also played by John Ritter, mm -hmm. so identical spy who dies in a training mission that's kind of set up for this meet and greet with the aliens who are going to provide either a big-ass gun <laughs> or cure to... Uh, all the things we fucked up with this planet. The good thing. The, the good, good package. Thing. The yeah. good package or the big gun. That's the movie. So you have some CIA agents who want the big gun and others that obviously want the, the good package because the planet's fucked and we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. There's also Russians involved because it's 1987. And they want the big gun. <laughs> they want the yeah. big gun. <laughs> and the aliens... The UFO is... Yeah, he keeps calling UFO, and I'm like, no, just say aliens, but he's go UFO. Yeah. No. <laughs> that bothered me. I don't know why. So yeah. It was supposed to bother you. Oh, okay. So the aliens are expecting the John Ritter character. Yeah, they only want to talk to him, which I find reasonable. Yeah, they couldn't find Jack Tripper, so they find this other guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who looks just like him. That's right. But he's a milk toast. And... Rather than tell him what's going on, and it, I guess that's that's not true. Jim Belushi does tell him. It's a mission. But it sounds fucking insane. Yes. Yeah. And so that's the hook. He thinks he's being kidnapped by an insane person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it works, surprisingly, for the most part. For the most yeah. part. This movie didn't age as well as my memory had of it. I remember really laughing at it the first time yeah. I'd seen it, and I'd clearly forgotten most of it. And this time around, I didn't find it all that funny. And ironically enough, the first time I saw it, I thought it was kind of stupid. I didn't, It did make me laugh, but I didn't get what the intent of the story actually was yeah. the first time I watched it. Because mm -hmm. um, it's it's got a fairly serious undertone to it. Yeah. I'd say maybe this is the first time I actually got it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's enjoyable once you get that. It's like, okay, this is all kind of stupid, but what they're doing with it still works for me. Yeah. Which makes it mm, probably a difficult one to remake, unfortunately, because it does fall into that Naked Gun farce category of which that genre is dead humor-wise right now. Yeah. Yeah, it is, but it's not... I don't think uh, it's as did. I think it's 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 right for a bit of a resurgence, but you don't have to be naked gunnish about no, it. No, and it's not, but it at times it, it feels has those moments like, like the the finger guns yeah. specifically. Yeah, the I finger think. guns have to go. That was irritating. Well, I mean, it's at this point it's almost overused now because we've actually even have action movies do it. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. like the losers had that one so scene. well too. They did it so well. <laughs> that was done better in the losers. Yeah. I'll watch Chris Evans do it, but I don't really care to watch John Ritter do it. <laughs> well, it makes me think maybe we should have like this, you know, one the one character of Jim Belushi who's trying to give him courage and usher him to this this meet and they're just being protected by this ghost sniper. <laughs> See, I kind of love that idea. Had, yes, and I kind of have a plan for that. I had I had kind of two should I just let it out of the gate? I think no, it's early. But <laughs> Yeah, no, I have two hooks to kind of fix that. And one of those was kind of that. Okay. Because there is a plan there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of Nick not even being aware of his backup. Yeah. So when the, when the finger guns come out, he's as surprised as Bob is. Yeah. Because, I mean, he believes in aliens because he's met them. Yes. Yeah. Right? They've given him a pen. <laughs> That's right. I love that bit. So he could be as astonished as Bob that it actually works, not realizing that he's got somebody backing him up too. Yeah, he could have even kind of just a side thing is like going, you didn't have some missing time or go somewhere for a little while at any point in your life, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and actually that could help us eliminate the dominatrix as much as I want to keep a dominatrix, but. <laughs> <laughs> also have plans for her too. <laughs> but that could be the sniper. 
It could be, and that, and that would actually some, work really well nicely into the story. Yeah, and then he meets the agent somewhere halfway through the movie. Well, and, that might actually, okay, and then I'm going to change my cast hook just up a little slightly. Bit. Yeah, I didn't, well, I wish I would have thought of that, because I've almost got no females in my cast. Yeah. But, <laughs> I, yeah. but you'll find out later why. Yeah. I can fill this out. Yeah, yeah. no, I, this will make a switch to what I have done, but it will work, because there is a plan in place. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you see where I'm going. I, so I like that hook, and and then and then we don't have as many extraneous characters. Like mm-hmm. if we can try to figure out a way to lessen the randomness of yeah, it all, because it is really random. Like I only cast three people because everybody else in this movie is kind oh, of throwaway. throwaway. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean I don't really dig a clown posse unless they're hiding out at a circus. Yeah. <laughs> like it yes. just doesn't really make sense. And if you got aliens, they should be killer clowns from outer space. Yes. <laughs> and I kind of, you know what, when you think about it, if you're a spy, traveling with a carnival is honestly the ultimate cover. You're going everywhere. Mm-hmm. Nobody suspects anything. And everybody kind of thinks you're sketchy and doesn't want to spend time with you. It would truly work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but a whole posse of them? Well, well a bunch I mean, of them. There's, there's more than one of, person that works on rides. There's usually <laughs> lots of clowns in a circus. But would they all be spies? And sometimes you have a sharpshooter. And the car is alien technology. Because <laughs> they just keep replicating. It'd be hilarious <laughs> if this circus nobody knew each other. Like, okay, so we've got the evil aliens. We've got the <laughs> we've got yeah. the good we've got the good I mean, sniper. We've got the counter CIA clowns. <laughs> yeah. Which are actually aliens. Like, I mean, added in, right? I mean, like you have yeah. you have the benevolent aliens. Mm-hmm. And then you have the yeah the ones that want to help aliens. humanity and the ones that want to make us extinct. They want the big gun mm-hmm. to be given to humans so that they wipe themselves out. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they're also lazy. Yeah, see, I had other plans for the big gun where it wasn't the other aliens. It was actually honestly corporations because the good package would wipe out any kind of need for them. Like it would <laughs> wipe out. Rampant consumerism, it would wipe out a lot of economic despair. Like, I have the good packages doing a ton of stuff. And corporations don't like that, so you have corporate guys trying to kill them as well. Well, I mean, greed and always wanting to have the bigger gun yeah. is just ingrained in our history. Yeah. Yes. Regardless of the fact that we know it would wipe out humanity. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's a commentary right there, is yeah. the fact that there's people who want this massive weapon or this weapon of mass destruction that would literally wipe out humanity and they still want it yeah mm-hmm. well we already have enough nuclear weapons to wipe out the earth a number of times yeah. and we yeah. just still have them yeah and like it, it speaks <laughs> we've done to this the ourselves insanity of the war machine that drives economies mm-hmm. yeah hence the corporations are in on it. yeah then yeah. that's what makes this movie so relevant to do again because always unfortunately yeah unfortunately yeah. we never seem to get the damn message no. I'm not sure this, you know, on your first watch, you will get the <laughs> the message with this movie, mm-hmm. but unless you know, you're like 13 and then you don't get it, yeah, which is probably <laughs> about the age we probably all were when we yeah, saw I this think thing. I was 18 or 19, and and yeah, I was still pretty fucking dumb. Yeah, uh, I was a child. I like some of the jokes where he's like, "You, you scared me so well. Yeah. Mm. That was really good. I kind of enjoy." It's that little passive aggressive being, you saved my life by throwing yourself in front of the bullets. <laughs> I yeah. did kind of enjoy that. Well, and, and that's the thing is, I mean, particularly when this movie came out, it wasn't for me, I don't think, as a mm-hmm. late teenager, because I was still watching movies just for entertainment. I wasn't seeing meanings in movies typically. But for a comedy, there's a lot happening in this film. Yes. Yeah. You've got the personal level of the growth of both characters in Jim Belushi and John Ritter. And then you've got the overarching theme of humanity struggling with its darker side and its need to survive. (laughs) Like you have this need for the good package, but you want the bad package. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of thought at some point, like a good package, that's a good choice because at one point maybe the alien be like going because if you asked for the big gun we just would have used it on you. <laughs> and I just realized that there's a innuendo there. We're talking about real men. We're talking about big guns and, uh-huh. and good packages. Yeah. Uh huh. They're like, t- I can't believe I missed that 
watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you just saying that now, I didn't even get that. <laughs> I get it. I got it. <laughs> I told you I wasn't a real man. I don't get no, dick jokes. No, you did. You got it. I didn't get yeah. it. Well, it took, it took me forever to get a dick joke, though, so I'm not a real man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I should have laughed at good package, but I didn't. Well, I most women don't know what package. a good package is. <laughs> oh, oh. All right. Well, I'm going to run the trailer for <laughs> Real Men, and we will figure out who the real men are right after this. <laughs> Nick Pirandello, CIA agent. I think I went into the CIA because most other employers have rules against bringing automatic weapons to work. Bob Wilson, insurance agent. I'm thinking about joining a health club, but for now I'm just eating more bran. A couple of real men. Most guys don't stay in the business very long. You know, they get shot, poisoned, they lose interest. I think Russians are people just like us. A little paler, maybe. I crashed a KGB Christmas party once. They acted like they'd never seen a flamethrower before. With women's clothes, I think sometimes it's sexier what you can't see. Sex is the most natural, the most beautiful way for a man and a woman to sweat. It used to be real men had dogs and women had cats. Cats are for women. Real men like dogs. You can say what you want to about polyester, but it really holds a crease nicely. They say saturated fats are bad for your heart. James Belushi is Nick. So are car bombs. John Ritter is Bob. Becoming partners for a dangerous secret mission wasn't their idea. Only the CIA could think of something that stupid. Real men. Coming real soon to a theater real close. That was a trailer for Real Men from 1987, written and directed by Dennis Feldman. This was his only directorial credit, oh. but he wrote things like The Golden Child for Eddie Murphy. Oh, okay, yeah. All the Species movies and Virus with Jimmy Lee Curtis. Ooh, I do like that one. Yeah, he's just a short, short resume for a guy who wrote some actually pretty decent stuff. Yeah. And created yeah. a franchise in Species, yeah. a minor one, but, you know. Yeah. And, like, The Golden Child is a wild movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still might watch it. There's some weird stuff there. I love The Golden Child. So do I. I, and I watched the shit yeah. out of that movie. Yeah. And you can see elements of Golden Child in this as well and vice versa. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's kind of got that same feel in terms of presentation and, and timing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I want the knife. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This stars Jim Belushi as Nick Perondello. I don't know why they gave everybody, the movie characters, such hard names to say, but Mm. uh, Nick Perondello. Uh, Jim Belushi, we've actually talked about a couple of times, episode 68. Uh, Trading Places. And episode 178. Last Action Hero and episode 55. He was in Little Shop of Horrors as well. Oh, I missed that one. Which part was he playing, I wonder? Probably a blink and you miss it part. Yeah, probably. I don't remember him in any of these, so. No. Well, I actually He's the guy remember gets him raped in... by the gorilla in Trading Places. I do. Oh, oh. I do. Re- that's right. I do remember him in Last Action Hero, though. Mm. Uh, John Ritter is Bob Wilson. We have not talked about John before, but he's been in It, Bad Santa, and Three's Company, unfortunately taken from us far too soon. Mm-hmm. If you want to cry, watch the episode of Eight Simple Rules where they deal mm. with his death. Mm hmm. Man. Yeah, that's a rough one. I don't think I ever watched that show except for that episode. That's all I did, yeah. too. Because sitcoms, eh. But I had to watch that one. Mm-hmm. Barbara Barry was Mom Pirandello, so mm-hmm. we don't give them real names, but it's pretty fun either way. She was in Private Benjamin. Bill Morey was Millard Cunard. He was in episode 245. Death Race 2000. That's right. Issa Junk was Dolly. I don't remember a Dolly, but she was in Night Angel from 1990. Was she the dominatrix, maybe? No, she was no. the one in the bed when he crashed through the window. No, because that's Woman in Bed. Was she, woman in bed? Yeah, okay. that is Woman in Bed. I remember that. <laughs> was she the Russian negotiator? Maybe. That's that's the problem is half these characters are named and then aren't named in the movie. So yeah. I don't know how, who most of them are. Gail Barl is Sherry. Uh, Spaceballs, uh, some kind of hero with Richard Pryor. She was in both of those. Mark Harrier was Bradshaw. He was in all the Porky movies. 
Well, and that was about it. That was pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, Porky's, Porky's 2 the next day, and then Porky's the Revenge. Yeah. yeah. Canadian favorites. Woohoo! The body comedy has kind of gone away. It is. The sex comedy. We'll probably get those back at some point. Matthew Brooks was Bob Wilson Jr., so one of the kids. He was in Beethoven. Mariah Dobson was Heather Wilson, and she was in The Other Side. Stephen Corvin was Russian agent, mm-hmm. and he was in Night of the Cyclone. Charles Walker was Mahoney. He was in episode 152. Oh, I missed that one. No Way Out. Oh. Diane Thorne was Dad Pirandello. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what she has to say about this one. When I saw the, the list, I'm like, oh, Jay's going to be so excited. I was. Mm-hmm. Also, the She-Wolf of the SS was in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> she was looking pretty old at this point, but I mean. She her, still looked her, gorgeous. Her, her, yeah, she was still gorgeous, but you know, her heyday was like in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> considering the vileness of the movie she was in, and then she was in this kind of PG spy comedy, I'm like, one of these things is not like the other. Because <laughs> most she was of her like, career. It's time to change my image. I know. <laughs> yeah. Most of her career were in these really hostile sex movies, <laughs> violent and gory, and lots of tits and ass and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Dick. Although she's usually doing bad things to the dicks. I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen any She doesn't movie. think they're a good package? Oh, just watch the trailer. You'll get it. <laughs> I've not seen one either. It's in the trailer. Yeah, I won't. I Yeah, I'm not interested in those movies. <laughs> Dark times, man. They are disgusting movies, but just uh, that's why I love running the trailers mm-hmm. in cult movie trailer go go because they are just wild. You can even even in the audio you can you get bonkers. It. They are bonkers. And uh, Don Dolan was UFO who was in the Philadelphia Experiments, and that's where I stopped. Sam's got one. I have two more two actually. More. I don't can't remember who she played, but Susie Slater uh, was. I think she was actually the girlfriend, the Dominic's girlfriend. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. She was in episode 212, Chopping Mall. Oh, nice. And then James LaGrosse, the punk yes. at the beginning of the movie. Point Break. We've talked about him twice. Yeah, Point Break. And he's also in Near Dark, episode 176. Oh, yes. nice. Nice, yeah. nice. I made a point of getting him because I knew that we talked about him at least once. Well, I looked at him in this movie and I was like, that guy looks a lot like James LaGrosse. And for some reason, because I saw him in Point Break, and to me, he looks so young that I'm like, he can't be the same guy. Same guy. Yeah. Yeah. He, when they started diving into the credits and it's like, guy in foam booth or whatever mm-hmm. you know i just stopped looking yeah and that's typically mine if which they don't is, have a name i don't look which anymore. you know yeah. in hindsight you know girl in bar turned out to be this mousy girl that was a dominatrix and yeah. could fly helicopters yes <laughs> yes i you, never meet these cute mousy girls and nerdy girls in the bars that turn out to be dominatrixes that's because you never meet girls in bars. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> you have to go to the bar. Up, I'm always chatting up the waitress when I do. I've been to the bar a lot lately. Thank really? You very much. Yes. Okay. <laughs> For food. <laughs> True. True. I haven't been to the bar lately, but I mean, where I am. Yeah, that's true. It's just kind of sad. <laughs> Small towns. That's the only place people go. <laughs> yeah. Well, the brewery is nice, but it closes at like 10. Ah. That's too early to make bad decisions. I, <laughs> and I don't know, getting drunk on Spock beer. <laughs> no, they have some wonderful, wonderful things at this brewery. Is it the Spock brewery? It's the, the no, Vul- it's the a one nine that does and a Vulcan line. Ale? No, oh. it doesn't do Vulcan ale, but it does okay. a wide range. Is that still range. around? No. Oh, okay. They made half decent beer. No, it's now Mama's Pizza, and oh. they're renovating that building. Oh. I miss Vulcan Ale and or no, it was Romulan Ale. Mm-hmm. They did they did a Klingon one, which I think was a stout. They, ha- I'm telling you, Nyland has a delicious like they. You can have a flight of beers. They're all like they're really quite delicious beers. They also have hard seltzers that you can choose which kind of syrup you want it to be flavored as. They have oh, it's a soda and tea. Drink? kind of yeah, cool. Um, and they have uh, what else? They have a cider. Cider or two on tap. They've free, got some good free stuff. Free plugs for anybody traveling through Vulcan. Yeah, nine in line. Go there. It's good. <laughs> All right. Well, back to real men. Mm-hmm. Who don't drink seltzer. <laughs> real men don't drink seltzers. No. <laughs> drink yeah. beer and smoke cigars and drive four-wheel drives. <laughs> but are, are you ready for my hook about Nick? Okay. 
Okay. Nick presents as this like big, tough, misogynistic prick, but he's really not. He does it for the sake of his job because it's expected of him. He doesn't do half the shit he says with women. <laughs> he's actually a very respectful kind of open man because of his father. Mm-hmm. He's decided, like his father has told him what women's lives are like. He's kind of changed as a man. And he just, that's how he presents. Well, and you because can infer it's, that from this movie. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. That's the, the clues are there. Yeah. Yeah, because he is kind of a decent and, human being, but he acts like insanely alpha. Yeah. Yeah. And the dominatrix is actually his long-term girlfriend. Well, that's that's the whole point of the story is he meets this woman who this he wants to actually spend time with, with right? Yeah. yeah. First time he's kind of found somebody he wants to have a more meaningful relationship yeah. with. Yeah. And he pretends to to like it, but and then that, the other that's thing the too, thrust of be- the film too. Like it happens very quickly, but it's being forced to acknowledge his problematic his inner, behaviors, yeah, his problematic behaviors, and his inner feelings while attached to a Saint Andrew's cross and being flipped around. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, the cue is that he just acts this way for his job, and I mean, you have, and I also thought that Bob would. He would have a misunderstanding of how to be a bigger man. Like he thinks he's some beta and he doesn't like he doesn't understand. Mas- so through this, Nick kind of actually teaches him like a healthier realm of masculinity while still building him up mm-hmm. <laughs> to deal with his shit. Well, and that's essentially the gist of the film anyhow, right? Yeah. But I think that you don't want to change Nick too much because part of his journey is that acknowledgement that he is not a decent human being in that respect on his treatment of women. Whether it's the way he thinks about them or the way he tre- he actually treats them, it's still bad behavior. And this is his moment of understanding there, there's more to women than just being a physical object that you get your, your jollies with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, to me, what do you do with the shift for the changes on Bob? It's not on him. That's kind of what I wanted to do. Well, they both have that change though, right? They both have their moment. And that's exactly what happens. Maybe not as subtly as, as you're thinking, but it's happening, right? Because mm-hmm. John goes from a beta to... A balanced man. I wouldn't call him an alpha or a beta. Well, I mean, John also gets a false sense of security in himself, mainly because of the sniper (laughs) (laughs) or just the finger gun thing, but people dying around him. And to me, it felt like, boy, he is going to die a horrible death at some point (laughs) because because he probably can't back it up. He can't back it up. I mean, it's not even just that. He thinks he can fight people, so he'll start being antagonistic toward people Mm -hmm. and somebody will kick his ass that's the whole point he needs to be able to show confidence and be able to deal with his shit but that's not necessarily being quote unquote a man Mm -hmm. no and i think that's where you change at the end that that final scene where he beats up the thugs Mm -hmm. that's where you have that moment where he doesn't go and beat them up but he shows the confidence that he could if he needed to Mm -hmm. oh and here's the other bit that bothered me about this movie he comes home his son's bike is stolen But they also yelled horrible things at his daughter. When he goes to confront the bullies both times, it's about the bike. Yeah. and He doesn't give a fuck about his daughter. I think that's, yeah, something was missed over definitely in the writing is if you're going to add that element in, he needs to... to, They need to acknowledge that as well. You don't just protect the kid's bike, you protect your kids. Yeah. Period. Period, yeah. 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 And I think, yeah, I think if you have that end scene where instead of beating them up, they try to beat him up and they just never get to touch him. He doesn't actually beat them up, he just... He just pulls that Remo Williams where he just ducks. Yeah, and they weaves. beat themselves up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, and I think that would be a lot more in tune with that balanced maleness that I think they were trying to go for mm-hmm. with yeah. both characters. I mean, and that you can have him going overboard and then peeling back because he's not liking that version of himself. Like and that's that, part of growth. It's like okay, yeah. try to be like Nick. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. And Nick is pulling in bits of personality from. Bob as well. Yeah. Well, and the thing about Nick is if you notice throughout the movie, he never uses violence until it becomes necessary. Yeah. I mean, he's in that opening scene in the garage, like they're being shot at and he's got a gun. He's not shooting back. He jury rigs a rapid fire nail gun. Which I loved. Mm. I loved. I wanted more of him jury rigging weapons because I loved that in the first scene with him and then the scene in the garage. Yeah. I'm like, I need more of that. I don't think Mm. he, like, in my mind as a character- FBI agent. He's not above killing people, but because we have rogue agents, he's maybe not wanting to kill people he knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I th- I like the idea of him, again, not wanting to kill people unless absolutely necessary either. Mm. Yeah. 
Which is why I kind of like the idea is like, it's not so much a change, but it's a, a cover for him where it's not so much you have that constant change, but there's the realization that he's actually not like that. Yeah. And I see where you're going with that. I, I think it diminishes his change at the end though, right? Because he has to be that, have that misogynistic attitude in order for it to work successfully for him to find that meaningful relationship. Because otherwise it's just, well, this is what I've been looking well, for no, all along. Well, no, but that's the whole point. I've covered that in the fact that it's not a meaningless relationship. He already knows her. She's the sniper. They've been together for years. It's a cover. It, then it diminishes the whole change, though, the, the, the whole transition. But right? he doesn't have to transition. Bob does. He doesn't have to. Well, it's well the journey no, of both men, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. You're, we are, by doing that, we're eliminating half like the journey. Half, yeah, half the story <laughs> between I, these I like two what you're, what you're thinking, but I just don't think it works for this particular Yeah, yeah I mean, but he, I mean, I kind of want it to be because my, the part of it. My Well, my beef with, that's why he shouldn't know the sniper. Yeah. But- my beef with this movie, too, is he's learning more about sensitivity, not from Bob, but from somebody else who's beating the shit out of yeah. him for sexual pleasure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's the part I, I mean, also had a problem it with. Should, he should be learning from Bob. Yes. It's there. There's To a certain extent, it is there, but he doesn't confront any of that until being bound up. Yeah. And, and, because and he's at his most then, vulnerable, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? And I think that's what that was supposed to to represent is that he's vulnerable in so many ways in that moment, both emotionally and physically. Yeah. Now, I could say maybe Nick was trying to protect Bob, gets captured by the enemy, and that's when the sniper has to go in and rescue him. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob's on the run. Yeah. Doing his thing. Maybe stopping the thieves. Yeah, because that's yeah. what he was doing. He was stopping a robbery. Yeah. Well, while Nick was getting beat up, beat up and banged. <laughs> so if we change that somewhat, where he's in a vulnerable position, now meets this girl, but also seeing what Bob's been doing, Nick had that opportunity to stop this crime and didn't. He's like, oh, just a robbery, and just left it. Here's this guy who's supposed to be a lawman, right? Yeah. Yeah, he does it to get laid. Well, then I kind of think we can eliminate the parents. Because, I mean, my whole thing was actually hinging on the fact that he had parents like that, which helped him understand what was wrong with Well, I mean, behaving. most of that scene doesn't work anyway. But I do like the fact that he has that history with his parents. And we can maybe have that in dialogue and being one more of these unbelievable things he says. And then meet the parents. Much, much later, though, near the end of the movie. It's like, hey, Bob, you're a cool dude. Come in and meet my parents. And it's exactly, that's the thing that I like about this movie. He says all these wild things that turn out to be true. And I kind of want to keep build that, those, up, those, yeah. those elements there because that's part of where the humor is. Is he How says absurd. all this absurd stuff and every damn thing of it was true. I mean, I'm not sure why the aliens want a glass of water. <laughs> oh, I had a kind of plan for that, too. And, and I mean, there was a special glass that they had to go retrieve. Well, there was a tree. We, yeah, with the water. of Like, leave it to the U.S. to overcomplicate things. Just pour a glass out of the water over the Brita. You don't have to mint a glass from the government because he gave the glass back. He didn't want the token glass. <laughs> here, here. Well, I had a concept too that like they're like, we can't give it to him in a bottle. That's how we got in this mess. <laughs> they're going to be so mad if he gets bottled water. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good question. Is they want the water because it was about sharing. Right? Yeah. It didn't matter what it was. It was about sharing. Yeah. Right. We're going to, you, you share us your greatest gift, which is water. Mm -hmm. And we're going to share our gift with you. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think, and maybe we need to find point why they want the water. Is clean water is your gift, and you're destroying your your mm -hmm. gift? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of representational, but also that is the life blood metaphor. Of your yeah. And they also like water. It'd be like you guys treat this like garbage, but it's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> We've been all around the universe. It's this in, stuff is tasty. It's important and it's rare. Yeah, you know, it could be rare within the universe. Exactly. Maybe that's part of the dialogue at the end. Is like. Bob says, why a glass of water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering why he never did ask that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we as human beings, one of the key components in finding life in other planets is to find water first. Yes. You can't go without water. Yeah. As we all sit here with a glass of water by us. Yeah. Yep. 
And if you don't, you will die of dehydration in three days. You will die of starvation in many more days. So I guess we're keeping the water. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's important. I think I, I <laughs> But we I think they need to we need to put that in the movie yeah. as to why they want the yeah. water. And it is and, it's just and a simple they, line of dialogue. Yeah, it's it's like why did you want water? Is because you guys take it for granted. Yeah. And it's your most important resource. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Simple, simple answer. Mm-hmm. Although mm, it also doesn't I'm not sure if it makes sense to meet an a, an agent rather than some political somebody has a little more political heft to them, or maybe they don't trust. I mean, I well, wouldn't trust our politics of... right now yeah. either. Okay, I'm gonna go. Sorry, they, I know they, I've beaten this dead horse, that, but I'm going back was... to it just slightly. Is part of it is because of the way the government is running things and doing things that they don't trust them they want somebody who actually has good character yeah they do make a point of saying at least the original agent was somebody they implicitly trusted Mm -hmm. to make a right decision or just whatever to deal with them but nick's clearly met them so why couldn't have been nick and that goes back to his journey is he makes bad decisions he makes bad decisions and he's not a balanced human being Mm. right whereas this other agent was as balanced as a human being could be Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I mean, I don't know how you address that in in film. And I guess part of this story was to get Bob to a point where he was balanced, because he certainly wasn't at the beginning. No, he certainly wasn't. Yeah. No. no. No, he was. He was lost. I kind of want the aliens to be like, yeah, if you do address it, why it couldn't be Nick? Mm-hmm. At the end, the aliens be like, oh, I see you've learned to treat women like creatures and other humans you're yeah. not so much of a douche as you were at the beginning yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean it doesn't even have to be like that it's just like we, we see you but you've you've grown and you've and, and you've started to see the other side of yourself mm-hmm. right it doesn't have to be about women specifically because it, it's it's more than that but it's just that's the easiest way to acknowledge the fact that he was not a sensitive human being yeah now we do have another problem okay. everybody's after the map to this meet map yes <laughs> paper yeah that doesn't really work anymore does it no no it really doesn't (laughs) especially considering they already had the map somebody stole it off the first agent during the trial run yes so what were they stealing and honestly if you see it there might be somebody who could take a look at oh i know where that is and the map could be gone they're like it's approximately here yeah now the secret might lie in the pen no the secret lies in bob he's the only one the aliens will deal with. No, but what is everybody else after? They're after Bob. Yeah, but they've already killed the agent. They know that's not the agent. So they're all they're not after Bob, they're after the map. That's but, why John Ritter at one point he's has a chance to run away and he realizes he has the map and goes back. Oh, oh, yeah. oh there is a map and they are after Bob, but it's because the aliens won't transmit it until the last minute. I mean, they're after Bob because he's the guy that they want at the meet. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But now he's an unknown quantity, Mm -hmm. right? Because they, they think that maybe they can manipulate him to their purposes, just like Nick is already doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why they're after Bob. But yeah, the whole thing, um, and maybe there's more to the map. Maybe it's like a beacon for them to land Well, that's to. why I'm thinking the pen would yeah. do. Like having his pen and then pounding it through a baseball just to have it fly away. I'm like, oh, well, there's nothing there. Okay. Well, that, that was that was just a sight gag. To that was, was right. true. I mean, um, it was a sight gag, but maybe but then we could have back. like, you know, click. And then this whole light show happens of where they need to go. and Yeah, we'll but then why would Nick have the But yeah, then Nick but. doesn't need to get bob at all but they won't meet with nick they'll meet with yeah they know nick so they're after the pen not the map so they t- yeah, and they get the agent's pen when they kill him not realizing that nick has another pen or the pens because they're aliens the pens are bio marked yeah they can't get into it yeah unless you have the person that's the pen is but for, then that breaks bob that does break bob yeah so that can't work um, oh but his, if his pen was stolen well then if the original agent's pen was stolen but they find out that Nick yeah. has another pen. Uh, it was more overcomplicating. Well, it. Nick yeah. has another pen, but they won't meet with him, so he still needs Bob. Yes, and that's why we need Well, Bob. see, that's the problem with this movie as a whole. They steal the map in the first place and kill the agent that looks like Bob. So they have already know where the meat is. Mm-hmm. And spoiler, <laughs> they know that the aliens will only meet with Bob. Yeah. 
before they kill him, they know this. Yeah. So, like, the movie's, the, the original movie's broken right away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You, I don't think we're meant to overanalyze it like we have been. But, we have, yeah. but it is broken out of the gate. Yeah. Try to figure it out. Because, yeah. yeah, like, you got to make Bob necessary, but not in a way. <sighs> There has to be intel that only one person has. I mean, if, say, maybe the Russians figure the Americans are going to get to the big gun first, they don't want to have it. They want to have it, but if they can't have it, nobody will have it. That's why they killed the agent in the first place. That I can buy. Mm -hmm. And then you have- It's a very Russian way of doing things. I mean, the Purgosian thing that just happened, so- (laughs) Yeah, and actually, it's fixable, too, with Bob, the whole Bob thing, too, is Bob gets killed, because we know there's a faction inside the CIA- that wants the big gun and that's why they kill Bob, not realizing that they don't know that Bob is the only person that they'll talk to. Mm. They think, well, they, they, we've got Nick and the pen. As long as we have the pen, we can talk to the aliens. Mm. And then they find out that no, they don't want to talk to Bob. And Nick has the pen. He says, oh, no, yeah, that's how they find out. Is He says, oh, no, they only talk to Bob, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, if you show don't up, me be they there, will but they bugger won't talk right to Bob. off. Yeah, I they, mean, technically, they're aliens. They could probably tell that Bob genetically isn't the same dude. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. We were already suspending our, <laughs> yeah, our disbelief right. far enough. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the, Nick tells them outright, says, well, no, Bob did all the talking. They will only talk to Bob mm-hmm. or whatever yeah. the agent's name was. Um, so yeah, I have a pen. I have a map, but it's only a backup in case the other one goes missing. Mm-hmm. But they need Bob. <gasps> right, that just fixes that fixes that whole problem. Is they don't know that Bob is the only mm-hmm. person that, that they actually will speak with. Okay, they said they only want to talk to Bob. Okay, I don't know if this works. They will only talk to Bob. They're aliens. They were probably aware that that was a test. They're going to see if he got killed. If he didn't, they'd still talk to him. But at the end of the day, they want like a regular human. They don't want somebody who's been soiled mm-hmm. by the CIA, soiled right. by government, soiled by all this Evil other stuff. Aliens. Adding a whole other element that I don't think we need. I like I, what you're thinking again. Nah, but- I kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's something simple you can add in just with dialogue. Yeah, it just yeah. it adds an element to the aliens I'm not sure I like about, about whether or not he lives or dies mm. and not really caring, right? These, these are yeah. benevolent aliens, right? I mean, I think the test of humanity is making the right decision. I think it's humanity thinking we need somebody that looks like our agent. And I don't think the aliens really give a shit. <laughs> that would be mm-hmm. the funny part. Yeah. would be they get there and they've been monitoring the whole situation. Mm-hmm. And, and there's going, been battles yeah. with the CIA. They've been battles with Russians. They've been even battles with aliens, other aliens. Yeah. And, and each other for that matter. Yeah. And that's where mm-hmm. you can get the action comedy stuff in, right? And yeah, even the the more personal issues between the two men. Ultimately, they're going, we just wanted to get here. (laughs) It didn't have to be Bob. That was our request, but Mm -hmm. we knew he was dead. (laughs) You guys went through way too much effort, but we appreciate the thought. Yeah, Yeah, you guys went through way too much. It was like, we just kind of wanted a regular person (laughs) we just wanted somebody who would make the right decision yeah Yeah, right it's not about a regular person it's not about who that person was which is what you're saying yeah it's just they were hoping that they would get somebody who would make the right call yeah yeah and they found him and that's why they wouldn't talk to nick because they weren't sure he'd make the right call yeah Ooh, and you could have because i mean we do have him negotiating with the russians being like well you know i could be persuaded with enough money that agent would have made the right call and this guy, what they would go through to make the right call. Mm. I mean, Bob, he could die during this whole thing yeah. and he's still at the end. He decides, yeah. I have to go through with it. I mean, in part of Nick, we should be unsure of what side of the fence he's on. He's playing it really straight going, yeah. it's not my decision, it's yours. Yeah. And it's my, this is my job is just to get you there. Yeah. But mm. it would be interesting to see what his side of the argument would be. And whether he would change his mind one well, way or the other. And I think that, the, like Trish brought up, that's that one scene with the Russian agent where mm-hmm. she tries to bribe him. I think that can put you into that gray area. And maybe mm-hmm. there could be like a phone discussion with his boss. Yeah. Like saying, well, I mean, they is- try seduction. They try kidnapping mm-hmm. them, him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could even have the boss saying, oh, we want you to push him towards the big gun. And Nick can say, well, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that would be part of his character change. Yeah. Is that it's not his decision and maybe he doesn't think that's the right call or at least throughout this whole thing when he's figuring out his own 
humanity. Well, and his it's own more emotions. of a selfless call. Yeah. Because, I mean, sure, if he gets the big gun, that benefits him for a very short period of time. Mm-hmm. But you can have part of the selflessness as he's like, I'm kind of in a good place now, and I want the world mm-hmm. to go on. So, yeah. well, well, Nick's a character. And there's people I like in it. Yeah. Well, Nick has parents he loves with a complex history, and Bob's got a family, neither of which will be there if you pick the big gun. The big yeah. gun. Well, and Bob would always make the right decision. You can tell that about his yeah. character all the way through. Yes. So I think that's when you have those moments in the car or whatever where they're having their discussions and. Bob educates Nick and says, well, why would you want a big gun that's going to destroy humanity? Mm -hmm. There's still so much here. And if we have a chance to make that even better, Mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? And there's a teeny tiny part of that in the car. And part of this is about not just finding your sensitivity, but your bravery. And in a way, I think Nick, he's the man's man, the real man. He does all these manly things. But kind of like Bob, where Bob caves to the bullies in the neighborhood – Nick's caving to his superiors, going, just doing what he's told. Yeah. And you his know, fears of relationships. To, and his fears of relationships. So he's finding out his more sensitive side, but also the fact that his bosses are making the wrong call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they say, he's brave in certain situations, but he's not emotionally brave. No. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that that would make the, the end scene with his boss a lot more effective if we have some of those conversations about him trying to push Nick to push Bob mm-hmm. to choose the big gun yeah Mm -hmm. well like i said there is a hint of it when they're in the car and bob is asking well what is this big gun and nick is like oh it'll destroy a planet well then why the hell would you want that yeah (laughs) how stupid is that yeah it's like like, well we don't know we're gonna go to war with another planet (laughs) it's like who would we shoot at (laughs) the moon was looking at us funny yeah. Well, if you take that away, good luck with the oceans. Yeah. Shit's going to go bad. <laughs> you take out the moon, we're kind of all dead. I yeah. know. Exactly. And that's the, that's the whole point of the conversation. I was like, well, what planet are you taking out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then that's where, where Nick goes, what planet would we be taking out? Oh, I guess we would be evil aliens. So we probably would have a target well, for yeah. them. <laughs> no, I think, yeah. See, I eliminated evil aliens. Okay. But you do have Nick being like, well, I don't know. We're going to space. Mars is on the docket. I don't know. And then that's where <laughs> we might need it someday. Yeah. And that's where Bob goes, really? What planet do you think we'd use it on? And yeah. all he's got the one is we're we on. could yeah. someday need it. Yeah, it's because we're, you know, we'll populate another planet and then we'll go to war with each other. That's probably what would happen. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he's probably also thinking, like, you've seen Star Trek. We'll eventually get to space. We might meet mean people. We might need it. Because <laughs> you can see that as an excuse that somebody would come up with. Yeah. We might need it in That's the how the military works. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's how it works, is we're going to develop this weapon because we might need it someday. So that mentality totally works for this movie. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's where Bob is that counterpoint. It's like, think about it, Nick. Mm-hmm. Really think about it. What planet would we be using this on? Who exactly. would we be using this against? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you've got all this insanity that Nick's spouting. Sounds like just lies of a lunatic. And you have this level-headed regular person from suburbia. Well, not to put too fine a point on it, is you've got this gun that just lays impotent because you will never need it and you don't use it. And it's not necessary. And if you do use it, it'll fuck everything up. Trish just made a limp dick joke. I did. You're impotent with a big gun. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) That's all that it ends up being. Yeah, it's a great analogy. I have to go with it. Yeah. It's a great analogy. And I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that, that's the whole point that Bob tries to make. You never want to use it, and you should never use it. You mm-hmm. should never use it. Mm-hmm. So if you're not going to use it, don't have it. Yeah. Exactly. And he's like, well, also, what planet? He's like, you've met these aliens, and these are the ones that are here, and they're being nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They want to help us clean up the poisons of the I mean, planet. statistically, we've had... Some pretty good success with aliens. Yeah. See, and I would love to add at the very end where he makes the right choice and says, we like the good package. And the alien goes, good, because there never was a big gun. Mm-hmm. I thought of that too, yeah. yeah. And and they're I'd a peaceful, like, they're a peaceful, peaceful race. Why would they have a big yeah. gun? Yeah. yeah. It was a test. Yeah. And then because Nick comes up like, so, the cows. And they just get a little dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like, we like burgers. Um, you could have there never was a big gun, but I mean, if we didn't give you a big gun, you'd kill yourselves anyway. So it doesn't really matter to us. Yeah. Well, I don't even need to go that dark with. It's just simply there never was a big gun. Well, yeah, yeah but I right. mean, truly, 
the aliens can say this was your lifeline, but yeah, the big gun would have destroyed you anyway. Yeah, we, you we, have a big gun. Yeah, we don't need to hammer that point home. No, right? they don't need that's to the thing, it. right? Is we don't need to hammer everything home. Is mm-hmm. simply there never was a big gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you made the right choice to better your world rather than. Mm-hmm. It's like, good choice. You have enough guns. Yeah. 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 Well, or just be like, there never was a big gun. What yeah. did you think would happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That would be fine. But yeah, that's yeah. where, why would you think that we would give you something like that? Yeah. Yeah. We're not stupid. Yeah. It's like, well, you can either save yourselves or, well, I guess the other alternative is they kill themselves and then they take your shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they come and move in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just the idea of, of a peaceful alien race actually having a big gun to give them. Yes. Mm-hmm. It seemed, seemed weird. Yeah. So we can have that fixed, right? Mm-hmm. At least if they're, they're on one hand being benevolent and on the other hand being warmongering, it seems weird. I mean, it's us, but <laughs> <laughs> it seems weird. My one friend said the most funny thing is like, look, if aliens get to our planet, they win. Because if you can get through space, you're just going to automatically win. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah, that's a Mm. good point, right? You have the technology to get through space. You will always win. Yeah. If you you got here, you already beat us. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, it's just a matter of how long it takes before we're fully beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's why they had, like, within Flight of the Navigator, they just send drones because they're like, we'll just watch them punch themselves out. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we've we've done a few remakes now with alien invasions and somehow we always win, which is probably pretty unlikely. Exactly. <laughs> probably unlikely, yes. <laughs> and honestly, they wouldn't have to go to war with us. We're no. pretty good at it on our own. Then it goes back to the whole point of this movie is making that right call. Mm-hmm. And I and I that's what I l- really loved about this alien contact film yeah. is it wasn't about taking over the earth. It's like join us in being better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be better, be kind. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of your planet, take care of each other, take care of yourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have a good thing going. Would you like to join us? Yeah. yeah. Being a real man doesn't mean you have to destroy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about, again, flaunting your big gun. <laughs> <laughs> Being a man is honestly that protective nature of wanting to protect the planet, yourself, others. And being in touch with your emotions. That's yes. what this movie's about. Okay, Bob. You ready? Bob, why are you crying? Bob, it's a challenge. Of course it is a challenge. We can do it. I'll take out three, and you take out the two on the right. You have to take out the two on the right, Bob. Bob, please stop crying. It's eating away my confidence, Bob. All right, are we set to do some casting? Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sam. Since mine's the shortest, with a whopping three <laughs> <and> director. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. The characters just wander from situation to situation, so nobody feels very important. Mm-hmm. No, and like, yeah. instead you, you have Nick and Bob, and yeah. then the CIA director, mm-hmm. and that's about it, as far as like characters that have more than one scene. Yeah. So I went with those three. So for my Nick, I went with John Hamm. Okay. For my Bob, I went with Steve Carell. Okay. okay. I yeah. think that those two would work He's really well. He's kind of played that character. Yeah, and that's the thing. And he hasn't done a lot, a lot of comedy lately. Actually, I haven't seen him in a lot of anything lately, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But I think he'd be a good character to transition from sort of, I keep using the term milk toast, but that's what he is, to a balanced human being. And then for Kennard, the director of the CIA, I went with James Spader. Oh my God, I'm jealous of that. Yeah. That's good. Um, and then for my director, I went with Ross and Marshall Thurber, who directed Central Intelligence and Red Notice. Oh. Nice. Great. So he does action comedy fairly well. Nice. Fairly well. I'm not yeah. sure if I liked Red Notice, but you can decide for yourself on Netflix. Yeah. Before we do the end, is, did any of you think that Millard Cunard just made me think of Mallard Duck? <laughs> no. No. I was sitting there going, Cunard, that's duck in French. Fun. <laughs> yeah, you're the one who has even a grasp of French in this room, Trish, so... It's. I have high school French. That's all I've got. I said a grasp. My my grasp yeah, is. I can count to twelve and say oui. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Merci. Merci. Oui. Thank you. De rien. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Où est la bibliothèque? Where yep. is the library? Oh, okay. It's always where is the library? <laughs> yeah, we are. Jane are very bad Canadians. We have very yeah. very little French. Yeah. Oh, so do I. I mean, I, this is Alberta. My elementary school was French immersion, but when it became an option. I chose the opting, yeah. <laughs> and I kind of regret it because you know. 
well, uh, having languages, multiple languages, is a useful so skill cool. to have. I just think that the way they teach languages in Canada are poor. They teach you to write them rather than to speak them. Mm -hmm. And that's usually mostly my problem. I can read it a lot better, but constructing my own sentences, my yeah. brain doesn't do it very well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's why I stopped taking it because I, mean, I wanted to know how to speak it. I, very unlikely I'll ever need to write it down, but I certainly would need to be able to speak it and mm -hmm. you're not teaching me that. Mm -hmm. That's true. You betcha. That's why I got Duolingo mm -hmm. for that and German, which scared me because I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Back to the dominatrix. <laughs> Back to the dominatrix. Yeah, it was. No, it's not even that. It's very strange. For my neck, I went with John Bernthal because mm -hmm. there's shades of it in a TV show he did called The Class where he did comedy. Oh. And he was quite charming in it. Nice. Bob Wilson. I went with Jason Ritter. Very nice, yeah. But actually, it, I had to fight the urge to just do their kids because, you know, mm -hmm. Jason Ritter is John's kid and Jim Belushi also has a son who's acting around the same age. Mm -hmm. So he was born in 1980. So it, I had to resist the urge of just putting their children in it. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason looks a lot like his dad. Like, he does. Like his dad. Yeah. And he's got, he's got the comedy chops to do it. Yeah. So I liked it. And you can see him going from – you know, I did find a place for him though. Nice, and I did cast uh, for as his wife. I put Melanie Linsky because that's okay. his real life wife, and she's a goddess and deserves to be and everything. I named the mother. I made her Elena Parandello, and it was Patricia Clarkson. And I did that because I actually looked up her age, and it's technically possible. Okay, <laughs> yeah, mine's not possible, but it's fine. It's movies. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's the thing. I, I wanted to kind of deal with stuff, and then for I called him George. Pirandello when he was younger, mm -hmm. but now it's Monique. Okay. And I may, I had so much trouble finding, because I want to do a proper trans actor, mm. Alexander Billings. Oh, okay. Millard Cunard, Bradley Whitford. Okay. Oh, nice. The alien, William Fickner. Very He's nice. got kind That's of cool. an alien look to him. Sure, sure. And I had, I, okay, I had a side story about the milkman, mm -hmm. but it went a different way. In that his wife is actually trying to hide the affair of the older next door neighbor with the younger milkman because they don't want anybody to know. That's <laughs> yeah. funny. We didn't even touch the milkman subplot. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's he's completely wrong. She's not cheating on him. She's just helping the next door neighbor, Carol, me, hide her affair with the younger <laughs> milkman. <laughs> I cast myself in that role. Yeah. And you know what? I like that because then he doesn't have to beat up the milkman at the end. No, I think yeah. he, at the end, he just goes, the milkman's like, if you want to be together, be together. Yeah. Keeping it a secret just hurts you both. Yeah. And I like that far better than him turning, mm -hmm. getting all thuggish like he did at the end of yeah. the day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that undermined John Ritter's character. I, so you've come up with a fix for that and I like it. Yeah. And it nice. helps his, it helps with his wife thing too, where it's not like some creepy milkman. It's just, she's just trying to do her thing. Yeah. She yeah. loves her husband. And he just keeps giving her milk because she's- Oh yeah. I'm, out. as Carol, I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> She's really but I'm in love. Into Carol. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I'm in love with the milkman, and I'm lactose intolerant. It just happens. <laughs> so you've just got mounds of milk. <laughs> I do. So that's why I give it to the, to the neighbors. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then my director. I went two different ways because because I sort of wanted to keep the trans character and like kind of. You can have actually Nick when he kind of gets more sensitive at the end. He starts to truly understand his father. <laughs> and it's like he they always had a good relationship, but he pro probably just says, I now understand more about your dad. But I had Lily and Lana Wachowski because they would know about mm -hmm. that type of mm -hmm. thing. Or I did something fun. Reggie Tra. You've never heard of him because it's an anagram of Greta Gerwig. Oh. Yes. So that's what I did. Okay. Clever. <laughs> I added some a lot of side stuff. <laughs> well, I've got lots on mine as well, and I had to cast the manliest people I could find. This is probably one of my most inspired casts, and I feel really close to this one. Nice. Okay, so for Nick, I went with Jason Statham. Okay. For Bob, I went with forgetting Sarah Marshall star Jason Siegel. Ah. Mm. For UFO. Jason Momoa, for Mahoney, Jason Isaacs, for Bradshaw, Jason Biggs, for Millard, Jason Clark, for Dad, Jennifer Jason Lee. Allow me to say this publicly, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> 
But wait, there's I know. more. <laughs> I was about to say. I have various in. roles for clown posse's and agents and yeah. all sorts of stuff. So let's get Jason Ritter, Jason Schwartzman, Jason Lee, Jason Van Zukis, Jason Sudeikis, Jason Alexander, Jason Fleming, Jason Scott Lee, Jason Muse, Jason Bateman, and Jason Priestley into this movie that is directed by Jason Reitman and produced by Jason Blum. I thought you would be in there somewhere. That, that was, I would have to say that is It is of, written by me. Kind of <laughs> oh, genius, okay. but I fucking hate you. <laughs> I want. It's y- been a while since I did a joke cast, so. <laughs> I, want- I mean, it, it, the thing that really pisses me off is it all kind of works anyhow. I know. It's actually pretty good, isn't Here's it? Here's <laughs> what I kind of like, and I want to make one change to your cast. I want to make Jason Bateman Millard Cunard because he can play a really good smarmy government guy. <laughs> yeah, my roommate wanted him to be Bob. No, I liked him as he can be yeah. underhanded. He, If he doesn't think he can be, he should watch Ozark. I was putting some thought into who should be what. And then yeah. the leftovers just became extras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you are a female with Jason in your name, I need more of you. <laughs> so, I know, yeah. You had so Jennifer there are, will be casting calls. I could not find any more actresses with Jason in the name. So we need you to do a casting call. This is your moment. This is your time. Yes. <laughs> this is this is the guaranteed spot that you will have a leg up against anybody else mm-hmm. <laughs> as long as your name has Jason in it. <laughs> what if they change their name to Jason in their stage name? Does that work as well? I think I'm okay with that. Or if they have a name that is like foreign for Jason. So it doesn't oh. have to be specifically Jason, just means Jason. Just or Sony? Could be last name, doesn't have to be a first name. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like a Jennifer Miranda. Jason Lee yeah. was, it's a yeah. middle name. Yeah. A yeah. Miranda Jason. Yep. And it doesn't have to be spelt the same. Either. Okay, that was my other thing too, because like, I'm not limited in I've to seen J-A-S-O-N. Jason as a last name, J-A-S-E-N. I've seen it J-A-C-O-N. What kind of freak? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> There's also a J A Y S O N. Yeah, yeah, I knew a guy that version. Or if you're from East Asian heritage, J Sun, something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of variations, but yeah, that that is my cast of me (laughs) and my brethren. (laughs) Real Jasons. That should be what real real Jasons. Jasons all the time. Real Jasons. And I mean, we're talking grips. Everybody needs to be Jason. <laughs> 100% Jason. <laughs> That's the shirt. Yeah. I would say it's limited market, but it's not really. No. no. 100% Jason. I, I went to school with Jason. Uh, my generation, Jasons. there were a lot of Jasons. <laughs> Two Jasons when I was growing up. Oh, I, I knew five or six. Oh, God. Just in elementary school alone, we were called the Jason Boys, and every one of our last names was B-O-Y-S. And they were all in the same class. And that wasn't even all of us, because there was just one whose last name didn't fit. Freak. (laughs) Oh, yeah. All the Jasons. Yeah, no, I know a few Jasons. It was a very popular name. Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. It goes back a long way. Yeah, we have history. We're kings. Well... My name is Patricia, which I had to look up female form of Patrick, and then I had to look up means patrician Yeah, of noble birth. So when we've all forgotten about this episode, you can cast nothing but Patricias and Patricks. Mm-hmm. Sam's easy. There's so many Sams. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I've got a Patrick Wilson. <laughs> I put in a Patricia female. Clarkson. You're just mad because you didn't think of it first. No, because my ego isn't that big. <laughs> And oh. she cast herself in the movie. And, yeah. And, like I said, and my ego isn't that big. Um, <laughs> hey. But that, that wasn't is... an ego thing. You just want to do it because it's fun. Yeah. This is just dream casting. I just want to be part of it. <laughs> she just wants to have meaningless sex with the milkman. <laughs> well, not on screen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a no. It's implied. That's implied. Yeah. <laughs> it's implied. It's going to be very British, very Pride and Prejudice, lots of longing looks. <laughs> All right. Real Men is a 6.0 out of 10 on IMDb. It doesn't have enough critic scores on Rotten Tomatoes because oh. the movie had a very limited release and didn't really get a wide release until home video and television. That's the way I saw yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, ultimately, the movie only wound up grossing not even a million dollars. It was 
$873,000. Hmm. Well, and I can kind of see that because at the, when John made this, he was a TV guy, still really considered a TV guy. And yeah. Jim Belushi hadn't really broken out as a, as a movie actor at that point. He hadn't done K9 mm. or, and I think Red Heat came out around the same time. Like he had, he was just right on the cusp of breaking out. So they didn't have that star draw at the time. Well, interesting way to analyze it, but no. <laughs> the studio was going through some rough times, and they had already had a major box office failure prior to this. And they weren't confident enough to put it out in the mass market, and they couldn't stand another big-ass failure. Yeah. And ultimately, the next ones did wind up failing anyway. Yeah. May, may I ask what the failure was? Yeah, so the distributor for this was United Artists, and oh. they barely released it um, because of the failure of Heaven's Gate, oh, which yes. was 1980. Mm, which that, is, but that was like a nuclear bomb of epic proportion. Yeah, but yeah. seven years later, there's still- That's a lot, yeah. 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 It sounds like there's probably more to that story. Yeah. But, I can see their rationale being, like I said, that you have an, somebody who's not quite a, a box office draw yet and somebody who might be, but is known more for TV. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't think we have the power on this to put it to, yeah. to do a mass release on it. Um, I can see that thinking. Yeah, yeah. And maybe they were just having issues and they had mm -hmm. to really pick and choose of what they were going to release theatrically. <laughs> so I'm guessing real men got a, a short limited releases yeah. in the major cities and. For one weekend. See, I wonder yeah. if it wasn't filmed. Was it filmed earlier in Shelves or was it actually filmed right before Well, that does make me wonder because now that I seven think years about later. it, seven years, I mean, by that point, Jim Belushi had actually had quite yeah. a few hits. Yeah. But be. this feels like one of the early ones, even for Ritter. Yeah, yeah it does. So. so it does make me think that maybe this had been sitting on the shelf for a while. Yeah. And United Artists probably went, you know, let's even get some of our money back on it. Yeah. And do a limited yeah. release. Yeah. Now that these guys are out there, and honestly, the early 80s, it was that stank of you're either a movie actor or a TV actor, yeah. and they didn't believe you could be both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah, what I, the point I was trying to make with John Ritter is he hadn't quite broken into film yet. I never really did. He had, his, his film roles were pretty lean for the most part. Yeah. Well, because he was always fairly heavy into television. Yeah. Three's Company was on the air mm -hmm. for quite a while. And then- Eight Simple Rules. Eight Simple, Eight Simple Rules. Rules. And well, even even Jim Belushi had a lot of success on television yeah. as well. Yeah. And that was later in his career. That was that. later in his career. Yeah. He actually was had a lot of movies. A ton of I mean, yeah. I think about it and he, you know, he's the younger brother of John Belushi. Yeah who had passed away and a lot of people consider John the more talented one. Yeah. I'm not sure I do, but then again, John never did things I liked. Well, Jim and, did. And Jim did a lot of like action comedies and yeah. things that I really liked. And I liked his kind of shtick at the time. The man's man thing just carried throughout his freaking career. Oh, but yeah. at least See, they, some they of his poked stuff fun at I that. was okay with, but yeah, yeah, no, I was never, everybody's like Jim Belushi. I'm like, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty over it by the time it. According to Jim came out. Yeah. But. John Ritter, it's weird. The most notable role I remember him from is, as you said, It. But that was a TV miniseries. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see, mean, I Sling Blade is what, what I think is one of his best performances ever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was near the end of his life. But yeah, and then there was uh, Skin Deep. That yep. was probably his most successful mm -hmm. comedy. And, and it was, we were talking about sex comedies. Yes. It was definitely one of them with the, the dual and glow in the dark condoms. Yes. Yeah. Well, I wanted to think there was one he did called like, it was something like switching channels, changing channels. I um, remember. That was It was control. a madcap. It had Pam Dauber in it. And yeah. Yes. That, that was I, one that was kind of all over the place, but it had potential. Yeah. And didn't he do Dennis the Menace too? Oh, he might have. Something. Oh. Like, oh no, Problem Child. That's what it was. That's something it. Something like, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, Dennis. so I mean, he did a lot of films, but they certainly never got him the visibility that Three's Company did, and then later on, he had Simple Rules. Yeah, um, yeah, no, he was definitely had found more success in television. Yeah. And when Jim's career kind of fizzled, it did the same for him too. Yeah. You know, his theatrical roles were dwindling. He went to television, and according to Jim, was on forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. I never watched it, but and yeah. now he's retired and yeah, didn't either. Operates a uh, pot farm yep hey profitable yeah well he made it made some good money mm -hmm. and especially if you have a hit tv show i mean we were, you were talking about your cast there yeah. steve carell i mean he's got all that office money right yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, but he's also got the movie cachet of like Foxcatcher, where it was like Oscar nominated. So he's got that mm-hmm. other level to him that some yeah. of some people don't get. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just, I just, that's one of my thing about comedians who start taking on dramatic roles. I really like it when they mix it up a little bit, mm-hmm. right? I mean, like Tom Hanks got his started his career in comedic roles, but now almost never does comedic roles, mm-hmm. and that saddens me a little bit because yeah, you owe comedy something yeah even as a dramatic actor right i mean at least robin williams he mixed it up even if he was in a dramatic film he was still doing comedic parts in those dramatic films sometimes yes Mm -hmm. same with jim carrey is he isn't afraid to do comedic parts even in more serious films and that was one thing that i haven't seen a lot of other actors do yeah once they get serious they don't yeah when you think about tom hanks now you think about all those dramatic oh, parts. Captain Phillips. Captain Phillips. I am Apollo the captain 13, now. And, you know, uh, and I still want to, yeah, Philadelphia. I still, yeah, I still want to remember really Tom Hanks that did big. Yeah, you know? big and um, splash and the burbs. And the burbs. Yeah, like, I mean, he. Well, called, we did the money pit on this yeah. show, and mm-hmm. I still love that movie. It's yeah. dumb as hell, but I love it. But his comedic timing is so good. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and it's always a shame to me when they stop doing that type of thing. So that's why I wanted to see Steve Carell go back into a comedic role because mm-hmm. he's good at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he can. What's great about him is when you talked about him being perfect for that role, what was that movie he did? It was Julianne Moore, but then there's Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone in it. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Crazy it? Stupid Love. Yes, that's the one, yeah. Yes. And he's sort of a sad sack, but what's great is he's so generous because Ryan Gosling's character could be so annoying but he kind of let him shine because Carell knows like I can do whatever I want with the scene but he still lets somebody else do what they need to do yeah which is really nice yeah and interesting you bring that one up because that actually is kind of the same story as this yes right you've got this guy who's not very good with women and the beta male as it were and then you have Ryan Gosling's alpha male and the way that they, they change each other I think is brilliant and so it's a I think it's better done than this movie in Crazy Stupid Love it's more organically done well yeah and it's it's modern writing modern directors modern actors the whole attitude towards it has changed so and that's what Mm. we have an opportunity to do with our remake is bring that bring it for organic transition into a new movie well ron tomatoes did not have enough critic scores to go around for this but there is an audience score ah okay uh i'll go first i'm gonna go 59 Trish, you can prices write me if you like. 63. Wouldn't have mattered. Sam nailed it. Seriously? Yep. 59, dude. 59% audience score, which sits right in the pocket with IMDb's 6.0. Yeah, 6.0. Yeah. yeah. And it is. I mean, it's a comedy that's really stupid, but it is still kind of fun to watch. It is fun to watch, especially if you, like I said, as you, as you mature and you see the undertones of the film mm-hmm. that weren't handled all that well. Yeah. But I you mean, see just, what the intent was. Yeah. What little reviews you can find from that era were terrible. Like yeah. they mm-hmm. did not like this movie, but it seems to have gone through a bit of a reassessment later in life. Streaming wise, you know, you can only find it on Tubi that we could find. Yes. Uh, also YouTube, if you want to find it there as well. Yeah, no, but Tubi, you can find it easily enough. Yeah. I mean, sure, there's ads, but it's it's not like Plex. You can survive these ads. <laughs> yeah. They're not four times louder than the movie. Oh, yeah. And not four of the same one in a row. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was, while I was watching it on Tubi, I had a break and it had six ads. Like, oh, oh. six. I got hit hard, but they were quick. <laughs> what ads are you get? Okay, this is uh, this is genuinely a question. And they're all different. It has nothing to do with it, like anything to do here. What kind of ads do you guys get? Oh, I don't. I don't, I don't pay, pay much, attention. Yeah, I'm usually writing notes or something. Yeah. I'm the, sitting there and I'm getting so many diapers commercials. Yeah. I don't know. I was. I'm not paying attention. Yeah, to I'm commercials. sorry. I've, I get. I get up, get a glass of water or whatever. I don't really pay attention to them. I tune them out entirely. Uh-huh. But I, I remember once I was sitting down to do one for the show on plaques, and I started it, and it said 16 ads. They were all about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> same ad same ad they over re- yeah. by about five times i'm like screw this and i flipped it over to tubi instead oh yeah there's times where i'm like i wanted to watch this movie and i actually bailed on a movie i wanted to watch because i didn't want to look at any more ads yeah no it's obnoxious you know you're gonna spend hour and a half watching ads on a 90 minute movie 
It's going to double your time. Yeah. Right. No, thank you. <laughs> Plex, get your shit together. <laughs> you can't be making that much money off the same ad five times in a row. I'll, I'll be honest. The only thing I use Plex for is... To find where it is To elsewhere. find it elsewhere because they will tell you where else to look. <laughs> Plex, you are the internet explorer of streaming services. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody actually wants to watch on Plex. <laughs> yeah. Internet explorer, you use it to download other browsers. Plex, we use it to download other streaming services. Yeah, we just, yeah, we just find out where else we got to watch this movie. Well, if you liked Real Men and you like our show, give us a five-star rating and a short review over on Apple Podcasts wherever you find podcasts because it helps get more. Earballs. On on the show you can also follow us on our social media at invasion remake on twitter slash x whatever you want to call it these days while it's still there or you can follow us on facebook instagram tiktok uh threads threads i was trying to remember <laughs> i know it's hard i can't keep that one in my threads. head this is the first time i forgot it but yeah, you can find us over on Threads as well. We are Invasion of the Remake at all those places. Really easy to find. And you can also tell everybody about the show and a way to find the show. If you're unsure where to recommend them to, you can send them to our website. Invasionoftheremake.wixsite.com slash podcast. And we have links to several podcatchers over mm -hmm. there, plus a list of our entire library, including 31 Days of Horror, which is coming oh, up. so close. It's only a month away now. So, so exciting. We're getting very close to 31 Days of Horror. You can also hit the button... On our website, that'll take you to our T Public store. Sam's worked very hard mm. every year on 31 Days of Horror t shirts. Buy them. You don't buy, <laughs> but they are very cool. So maybe take another look at them. Prep yourself, get ready for 31 Days of Horror, get the shirt now, mm -hmm. or get the image on a hoodie or a, a mug, mug, a pillow, pillow, or a notebook, and write down your 31 Days in the notebook, then That's send the list to us. Yes. That's right, because we want to know what you're watching as well. And if you want it right on the air, do your 31 Days of Horror, and then by November 1st, send us that list. Just put it in an email, send it to us, or send us a private message on our social media, and uh, we will try to read it out as many as we can on the air mm -hmm. during our 31 Days of Horror episodes. And yeah, we're going to be doing horror all month long in October. <laughs> we're going to be watching movies we've never seen before for every day of October, uh -huh. and that will become our 31 Days of Horror specials that we traditionally do every year. Exactly. We will go slightly insane about two-thirds of the way through the month, as is usual. <laughs> <laughs> We're slightly insane before we even start it. That's why we do it. True, but there's a wall that you hit, and you're like... Am I really damaging my psyche by continuing on this path? Well, now that I have a roommate who's already worried I watch too much horror. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> He's seen nothing yet. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Jason, why did you buy an axe? No reason. <laughs> Just walk around your house wearing your Jason Voorhees mask all yeah. of October. I have enough Jason Voorhees masks to wear a different one every day of the week. You could. <laughs> You could. I, I mean, I was packing up my last place last October. I was like packing up my stuff, and I'm like, and I had two on display, and then I'm packing boxes and looking in other boxes, and like, oh my god, <laughs> what? When did I get that one? And that one. <laughs> Why do I have so many of these? <laughs> you only displayed a few. I had a funny idea. What you could do is one day he comes home, and you've got a uh, <laughs> some coveralls on. You're chopping with a big ass knife. You turn around, you've got the Michael Myers mask on. He asks, What's you doing? I'm like, I'm just chopping onions. The mask helps. <laughs> <laughs> and the jumpsuit keeps you from getting dirty. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's your apron. Yeah. It's that's what they're made for. Yeah. I'm gonna have so much fun having a roommate. It's <laughs> scaring the fuck out of them. <laughs> Jay, I think they're getting to you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Sure, sure, I know a hundred ways to get away with the murder, but that's just knowledge you get. <laughs> sure, I've seen the mistakes people make in these movies. What are you gonna do? I'm just learning. <laughs> if you don't learn something every day, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you have a big gun, you don't use it. No. Don't wave your big gun around at me. <laughs> no. 
You can do machete and axe. <laughs> Chainsaw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even a pencil. I learned that from John Wick. Exactly. <laughs> or a paperclip. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. I like to remind my roommate who doesn't want to watch the horror movies with me. <laughs> and I'm like, you saw John Wick with me where he killed way more people than Jason Voorhees has done in 12 yeah. movies. <laughs> and I don't know where I saw it, but I think at one point it might have been like a tale script or something. Somebody got beat to death with a toaster. I remember that vividly. <laughs> so, I mean, really. Yeah. Danger is everywhere. We're just learning so we know where it is. Exactly. You know, dolls. Dolls living next to a graveyard, I trying mean, to get a house that used to be a graveyard. Th thanks to Malignant, I am I get a little sketchy about any woman with long hair. Uh-oh. Because <laughs> I'm afraid that their evil twin is on the back of their head. I am a Gemini, so my two faces are all both here. <laughs> good to know, good to know. Good to know. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week with another comparison that isn't horror, because we're saving that till October. Mm. So until then, I've been Jason. I'm always Sam. And I continue to be Trish. And we are out of here. Get out! What? You want off the mission? Okay, you little wimp, get off! You're out. Hey, Bob. I am getting a little sick and tired of your pissing and moaning. I came to do a job and I'm going to do it. You think this mission is easy for me? You think I don't want to go home too? But you hear me complaining all the time? No, we've got an important job to do and I'm going to do it. Listen, so I didn't... think I respected you once. Look... You know, I even wanted to be like you. Hey... Just remember who saved your ass back there when those clowns were all over you. Yeah, well, I'll have you know... What? I'm gr grateful, very grateful for that, Bob. Well, I just want you to know that I'll be using that same kind of ability to back you up at every stage of this mission. Are you going to behave? Yes. Okay, close the door.